Howdy doody. All right, welcome icons and future icons to our every other week webinar series that we put on. What we want to do is just add significant value to, to you with you know, seriously actionable strategies, tactics that you can implement and deploy right now in your business to expand your influence, to expand your production, your net income, your net worth, and of course your bank account balance. So I've assembled a team here of just incredible producers, uh, panelists during our webinar today, that we're going to be talking through your business plan for 2022. Again, this is critically important because uh, if, it, if your business plan is not in place by October 31st of the previous year, well, frankly, you're already behind the eight ball. You're already behind for the following year. See, I say that because what we do in business today does not show up tomorrow or even the next day, generally shows up about 60 days later. So if come November 1st, you're not working your business plan, you're already behind. So those of you who have engaged in this process, those of you who are tuning in right now on Facebook Live, um, I, you're in the right place. All right, so without any delay, I just want to invite our, or uh, introduce our panelists rather. Maggie Parker, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead and introduce yourself where you're located. Uh, tell us a little bit about your business. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Maggie Parker. My um, better half isn't here. He's, uh, we're a husband and wife team, Brad and Maggie Parker. We're in Cincinnati, Ohio, but we do Ohio and Kentucky area. Um, and we've been in business for um, since 2014. So um, we're, we're just, we're trucking along and loving the market right now. So we're happy to be here. Fantastic. Welcome, Maggie. And thank you. Sean Palacino, go ahead. Great. I'm Sean Palacino from Los Angeles, California. Been uh, in business with real estate since 2005. Um, I have a team, a small team of about uh, six people. And I personally do about 40, 30, 35, 40 transactions myself per year. Um, definitely interested in continuing business planning because it's been a big part of my, my life since meeting you back in 2012. Love it, Sean. Welcome. Sandy Miller, take it away. Hey, well, I'm Sandy Miller, and I'm in the Northern California area, basically based out of central, uh, the Central Valley. And um, I love being with Icon Producers um, since I have met Sean um, and building my business plan and what like we're talking about today, I'm on track to double my production from last year. So I'm really excited to be here and share some of the things that I've learned. Um, and um, it's just a work in progress and you ha constantly have to just keep learning new things and implementing uh, things that uh, would, everything we're going to talk about here today. So I'm really excited about that. Love it. Well, Sandy, you're one of my favorite one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, no doubt about that. And you mentioned Icon Producers. Let's just take a moment. I want you to go to Facebook right now. Seriously, do a search for Icon Producers. Join our private group. Do it right away. You're going to see replays of webinars just like this. And gang, we do one every other week with you know icons of the industry where we're interviewing them. We're, we're bringing different vendors that can help you increase your production and profit. We're interviewing those folks. So um, without any additional delay, last and certainly not least, we've got David Torgerson. Take it away, David. Well, thank you. Yeah, happy to be here. I'm David Torgerson. I'm a real estate broker in Helena, Montana. I run a team. We just added our ninth person. We're bringing on two more, so we'll bump it up to 11 and uh, increased our admin. So this is the first year that I'm actually going to gross uh, over a million. Hey, congratulations, man. That is phenomenal. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the business planning process. And gang, to me, there's a four-step formula to what I call the ultimate success blueprint. So I'll, I'll give you those four steps here real quick. It starts with long-term vision, long-term strategy. Okay, if you don't know where you're ultimately going, any road will get you there. And generally, these people who do not have that profound sense of clarity around where they're headed, well, any decision will do. And those decisions that they make are generally short-sighted. So we start with an exercise that I call expectation setting to the now. Um, it's outlined also in the book, The One Thing, which I think is just brilliant. I had the pleasure of collaborating with Gary Keller and Jay Papazan and developed all the, the training curriculum on the back end of the success of that number one New York Times bestseller. Now, here's how this works. Okay. In fact, when I'm in a seminar environment, uh, it, whether it's hundreds or thousands of people in the audience, I say, everybody, do me a favor, take your left arm extended all the way to the left and your left hand represents, well, here's where I'm at today. Okay, let's get real about that and write about it with no judgment whatsoever. I don't care if you're at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. 
See, where, wherever you're at today has no bearing on where you're going to be 90 days down the road in real estate sales with appropriate and aggressive action. I think you would agree. So let's get real and right about that. If you took your right arm extended all the way to the right, your right hand represents, well, here's where I want to be someday. Now, the shortest distance between any, any two points is what? Straight line. Straight line. You got it. Yet, do people live their life in a straight line? Talk to me. Never. <laughs> I definitely don't. No doubt. No. So, so ultimately, guys, they okay, here's where I'm at today. What they do is they make the next logical, short-sighted decision. It might bring them up. It might bring them down. might bring them left. might bring them right. And yet the sad thing is that oftentimes people run out of time, energy, money, resources. They're forced to give up instead of go up. So rather, the first step in this business planning process that I encourage you to engage in, it's going to require you know, strategic thought time. And you already know that if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. So I would encourage you to time block the activity to say, okay, what is my long-term vision? Where am I headed? And let's get crystal clear about all of the benchmarks that you choose to track. What are your metrics of success? For example, how many people will be on your team if you choose to build a team? If you own a brokerage, how many people are going to be in your brokerage? Or, or if you're with EXP, for example, how many people are going to be in your revenue share organization? By the way, how much money are you going to be making in residual and passive income thanks to that model? Or how many uh, transactions will you be doing someday? What's your gross commission income? What's your net commission income? I want you to think about your real estate portfolio. How many doors are you going to own? I want you to think about your stock portfolio whether it's through the EXP stock awards that are just given to you or your own personal investing in the stock market, what do you want that to look like? I want you to think about your 401k, your self-directed IRA. And I want you to identify, well, what benchmarks do you choose to measure around? I mean, what is your yardstick of success? Now, this someday vision is, is in excess of five years. So based on the someday vision, in order to live life in a straight line, I think you go all the way up to the end and then you simply reverse engineer it, right? So based on the someday vision, where do you need to be in five years in order to be on track to accomplish the someday vision? And again, what is your metrics of success? What, what do you choose to measure around? And by the way, each of these points must be specific, must be measurable. Simply put, we can't manage what we don't measure. So based on the five-year benchmarks, when you accomplish those, you'll be on track to accomplish that someday vision. So from the five-year benchmarks, let's reverse engineer it down to three years. In the next 36 months, where must you be to be on track to hit the five-year and the someday vision? Based on the three-year, where must you be in 12 months to be on track to hit the three-year, the five-year, and someday vision? Based on the 12-month benchmarks, where, need to, where do you need to be in the next six months, the next quarter, the next month, the next week, today, <laughs> or even right now, what is that logical step along the trend line for you to accomplish that someday vision? Now, what are some of the benefits? Let's go to our panelists. What are some of the benefits of living in an intentional life by going through this exercise? Talk to me. What are your thoughts? I'd like to say just, <clears throat> first of all, sitting down and, and really putting some thought to what I want, knowing what I want. And when you, when you sit down and you put, you know, go through an exercise like, um, you know, writing down specific things, it, it actually, you get, you get some vision and some clarity that you didn't have before. Well, I, I often ask people, what is your definition of the word success? And by the way, if you're like me and you've asked thousands of people, what is your definition of that word success? You'll find that you're going to get thousands of different definitions. So to me, that word is a little bit elusive. It's a little bit confusing. I mean, how do you get your arms around that word, right? And how do you know when you're a success? So I went to Webster's Dictionary, just looked up the word, and the definition is really simple. It's about getting what you want. And that is the truest definition I've ever heard. Success is getting what you want. Okay. Not what I think you should want or what Maggie thinks you should want. It's about getting what you want at the end of the day. Yet sadly, a lot of people, they don't know what they want. They seriously don't. They haven't invested that strategic thought time to gain clarity around what they want. Now, every month, you guys, I identify somebody that I consider to be an icon of our industry, somebody who's closing hundreds, if not thousands of transactions per year. And one of the nine characteristics that I've identified 
uh, in regards to these individuals is number one, they know what they want. They've got this profound sense of clarity around what they choose to accomplish. So knowing what you want, really, that's where it all starts. This exercise, and in fact, I'm going to post to the chat for those of you that are live on our webinar, rather than being live on Facebook, I'm going to go ahead and post to the chat the long-term strategy exercise that I call ESTTN, expectation setting to the now. Now that word expectation, let's talk about that for a moment. See, we all set goals. There's no doubt about that. Yet I believe that when I personally set a goal, that it almost creates uncertainty rather than, th than certainty. I think, man, that's a goal. It's heavy. I might not accomplish that. Can anybody relate? Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Like, man, it's a goal. I'm going to have to push myself. I'm going to, right? So I prefer to set expectations. See, words create energy and emotion. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No doubt. So energy and emotion impacts our thoughts, our feelings, our action and results. So I prefer to set expectations. See, that way it changes my mindset around what it is that I choose to accomplish. I simply expect it to happen. So I'd encourage you to maybe change that word goal to expectation. Mm -hmm. And I did just, just post the long-term strategy ESTTN exercise. So go ahead and pull that up. I'm going to share my screen real quick, and I'm just going to show you what it looks like. It's really quite simple. You don't need the worksheet necessarily. I just want you to think through all the benchmarks, where you want to be someday in excess of five years. Go ahead and just articulate your answer. Based on the five year, where do you, or the someday, where do you need to be in the next five years? Where do you need to be in the next three years? And simply reverse engineer that down to today or even right now. By doing that, it's going to help you eliminate all of these shiny objects that are, I mean, every day you get emails about this new vendor, this new process, this new strategy. And, you know, once you've completed this exercise, you can truly make a decision. Is that something that I should engage with or is it merely a distraction? By the way, I'd mentioned EXP, I mentioned revenue share. And guys, that to me is the exit strategy for us as realtors. I mean, when's the last time you went to a realtor's retirement party? Seriously, if you're interested in retiring from this industry within the next three years or someday with plenty of residual and passive income, here's what I want you to do. Send a quick email to grace at iconcoaching.com grace at iconcoaching.com. I'll type it in the chat and we'll be more than happy to uh, share that info with you. Oh, by the way, I did only post that worksheet to our panelists. Let me repost that into the chat. My apologies. And I'll put that email address in there right now. Grace at iconcoaching.com. When Ryder you're tied for that, Sean, uh, I, when you asked Sean the question about like, what does it mean to live an intentional life? The, the thing that I've learned that's so nice about living an intentional life is that when you have intentional fun, that's way more enjoyable than the right. stuff that just like shows up just kind of like, oh, I guess that was fun. When you actually have time to plan it out, it's amazing. That's how memories are made. Yes. Isn't that the truth? No doubt about that. Love it, David. Thank you for underlining that. I appreciate it. So any other thoughts around the long-term strategy, gaining clarity on that? I think when you write things down, I don't think, I know I've done this in the past. I redid a house one time and I had every, I wrote down everything that I wanted to do to it. And then I put that board away. And a couple of years later, I pulled it out and I was like, oh, everything is done on that list. I even put it away and didn't even look at it. And I still got everything done. So same concept goes now, especially when you're intentional, you're looking and you are looking at it every day. I put it away. I didn't even know it. I mean, there was cobwebs on it. I was like, oh, wow. But I hit everything on there. So um, it just does something to your brain when you're being intentional and writing it down and knowing what you want. Um, it just kind of sears in your brain already. So no doubt. So let's, let's talk about what happens within the brain when you've got clarity around what you want. See, we all have what we call the reticular activating system. It's in the amygdala of the brain, and it's the filter that blocks out everything that we deem is not important. And it only lets those things into our conscious awareness that we've upgraded to this important type category. Like, for example, let's say, um, let's say you get, prior to getting your real estate license, let's say you went out to dinner with a, a whole bunch of friends, go to a really noisy and crowded restaurant. You're, I mean, you're having a great time. Everybody's laughing. Um, and you agree, well, let's do this again. We had a great time. Let's do it again. And between 
the first time you went out to dinner with them. And the second time you got your real estate license, right? Then you go out to the same crowded, noisy restaurant, can barely hear each other speak, yet somehow, some way, from four tables away, you hear somebody who says, I want to sell my house. Mm -hmm. See, because now you've upgraded that to an important type category. See, there's over 200 million bits of information hitting our mind every second of every day. Two million bits. Now, you and I have the ability to process just 134 bits of information. And by upgrading what you want to an important type category, all of a sudden, all of those things that surround you right now that support you in accomplishing that become part of your conscious awareness. So by knowing what you want, your subconscious, your conscious mind is going to help you support you in making that happen. I believe that everything you need to accomplish what you want is already within your grasp. You just need to know with clarity what you want. Any comments? Yeah, car, is a great, car is a great example of that. A car, yeah, no doubt about it. Tell us about that, Sean. Go ahead. Just, I just recently ordered a Tesla. And of course, I was seeing Teslas before I ordered it. But once I actually ordered it and I know it's coming and I'm arranging payment for it, I'm seeing them everywhere. <laughs> exactly. No <laughs> doubt about it. So if, if you came to pick me up and your Tesla took me out to lunch, I wouldn't notice those cars as we're driving to lunch. You would. Right. These are part of your conscious awareness. You know, a, a few years back, I, I got my boys up on the roof of our house, and I, it's my job as a father, right, to um, to get them to engage in a solid work ethic. So what we were going to do is we we're going to clean out the gutters, right? And we were going to do this together uh, as, you know, father, sons, and we're up there with the hose and we're spraying out the gutters. And and so we, we get in the car to run a family errand, right? And we're driving through our neighborhood and the boys are starting to point out everybody's gutters on their house saying, oh, those ones are dirty. Those ones are dirty, right? And yet we drove past those homes every day for years and they'd never, ever noticed that, Right. See, once you engage in the process, gang, it opens the reticular activating system to all the possibilities around you. It creates a heightened awareness that is going to support you in accomplishing that. There's no doubt in my mind. So with that said, the next step in this four-step sequence is an annual business plan. And that's why you showed up today. Mm -hmm. Now, in the ICON coaching methodology, we call it the ETA. It stands for Expectation, Targets, and Actions. So you're going to outline an expectation. Guys, I want to engage in an exercise with you right now. And I'll go ahead and pull up the uh, ETA uh, uh, worksheet as well, just real quick. And I'll go ahead and share my screen as we go through the exercise. And it's pulling up right now. So again, it stands uh, for expectation, targets, and actions. Go ahead. While you're doing that, while you're pulling that up, how important is knowing where I'm at, like a P&L, a profit and loss statement, or having, uh, you know, tracking my results where I know where I am? But undoubtedly, it's uh, paramount. I mean, it's it's a basic fundamental of growth, no doubt. I mean, if you don't know where you're at, you don't know where you're going. Um, you know, people have engaged me at Icon Coaching or engaged my other coaches here at Icon Coaching, and they'll show up spending, you know, five to ten thousand dollars per month, like in Zillow ad spend. Yet they have no idea what their return on investment is. Mm -hmm. And and when we get into the calculation and understand that, I had a client that was actually a twelve hundred percent negative ROI on ad spend with Zillow. And yet mm -hmm. they didn't realize that because they, they would close a few deals here and there through Zillow. They didn't actually go through the calculations to understand those numbers. So yes, Sean, it's a basic fundamental of growth. No but I'll, I'll share some input on the P&L too. So there's nothing more frustrating than having an outdated P&L and then seeing a property come on the market that's a really good opportunity that you can cash flow and then not being able to have all your information to the bank fast enough to make your offer and get it accepted. So mm. I learned that lesson like two years ago because I'm like, whoa, like, that's a really great deal. Like I could cash flow that thing like crazy. Didn't have a PL. So I was scrambling, trying to get, you know, try to work on a, like a, a loan officer on an accountant's time frame. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, it can't be done. You know, and, and that was the lesson that I learned. Like always have your, your PL updated. So mine's updated every week. Good for you. Now, by the way, as a sidebar comment to that, if you'd like a consistently updated PL, there's a platform out there that I would strongly encourage you to engage in. They'll help you with your budgeting model, your economic model, and they'll go retro all the way back to January 1st of 2021 for you. And they'll help set up your chart of accounts to where, you know, in January, you can hand over your books to your CPA. And by the way, 
It's about 20% of the cost of a traditional bookkeeper to make that happen. It's a platform called reprofit.com. And that's R-E and it's profit, like P-R-O-P-H-E-T.com. They will organize all of your books. And with four minutes, this is their claim to, to fame, four minutes a week from you, you will have a solid working P&L in your business. You'll be able to calculate your ROI on any ad spend, uh, even coaching. You can, you can tell how much more money am I making by engaging with a coach and be able to make educated decisions on the, the amount of money you're investing. All right. So with that said, come back to the ETA. So step number one, expectation setting to the now. Step number two is an annual business plan. Again, I call it the ETA stands for expectation, targets, and actions. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. You got it. All right. So at the top of the form, we're going to outline your expectation for 2022 or 2023 or 2029. Um, this is a format that, by the way, I have consulted with companies like McDonald's, Panasonic, FedEx, Forklips, T-Mobile, Genentech, some of the highest producing brokerages, teams, individual agents on the face of this planet, guys. It works for all of them. It works for me. And it will definitely work for you. So the ETA, what is your expectation for this next year? And let's take an example, gang, of let's say I want to close 50 transactions. Okay, so that becomes the expectation. We'll also outline it, when you close 50 transactions, what's your average gross commission income or what's your average sales price first? And we'll calculate what your annual um, sales volume expectation would be. Based on that sales volume, what is the average commission per deal? We'll outline your average gross commission income then we'll set an expectation around what your net income is going to look like based on your budgeting model. And if you don't have one, we can definitely help you create one, okay? Um, target number one. Well, since listings are leverage, and when you get a listing, it makes everything else easier, target number one is always going to be around how many listings you choose to close. Now, give me an example, gang. Let's say you want to close 50 transactions. How many of them would you want to be listings? 50. 50. <laughs> 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 Those 50 transactions, they're all going to be listings. I'm going to refer out the buyers. Uh, well, listings are leverage. Anytime you put a sign in somebody's front yard, every single agent in your local board has now joined your team to get that listing sold for you. You frankly, you can go sit on a beach and still make money while, while you're on vacation, right? So I, I don't blame you yet. Obviously, many agents want to work both the listing and buyer side of the business. So what do you think is a solid ratio there? Talk to me. 30. Yeah, 30. Yeah. So 60%. And that's, that's what I coach people to is that 60% of your transactions should be listings. So target number one, close 30 listings. That's 60% of 50 total transactions. Now, who's going to do that? Now, here's where the leverage aspect comes in. If you've got somebody on your team that's a powerful listing agent, you can assign target number one to that individual and then hold them accountable to closing 30 listings. Now, if you're a solo practitioner, a solo agent, well, of course, your name's gonna be all over your ETA in the by who column, and that's okay. That's where we all start. We start in the I do it phase, then we find the traction, we gain additional income, and we step into the we do it phase. Now, ultimately, we wanna step into the they do it phase, where you're truly leveraging models, systems, technology, and people to meet your income requirements and goals and expectations, excuse me. So let's get into the actions. Let's say I want to close 30 listings. Somebody give me an action that I can take. Now, this is going to be the fun part of our discussion, you guys. You're going to learn from some of the best in the industry, some of the higher producers in our industry, what they're doing to generate listing leads and closed listings. So, um, Sandy Miller, let's start with you. Sphere is... Uh... Sphere is the number one. You need to stay in touch with your sphere. And uh, when you're talking with them, if they are not looking to do anything, always ask for who do they know. Absolutely. So sphere of influence. So maybe action number one would be to implement and deploy a 36 touch campaign. Mm -hmm. Is communicating with the sphere. It's not just about phone calls, right? It's, it's uh, right. By, by land, by air, by sea. So it's direct mail. It's email campaigns, maybe an e-newsletter. Could be direct mail campaigns, holiday cards, birthday cards, posts on social media channels, text messages. All of these things could be built into a 36 touch campaign. So I'd average three touches per month with one expectation as a direct result of deploying this would be to really position yourself in the mind 
of everybody in your database, right? Mm -hmm. So meaning it's number of impressions. The more they see you and the more value you're providing, the, the stronger position you take in the mind of the prospect. Now, everybody out there that's not licensed in real estate sales, they have a very small percentage of their brain that they allocate to the name of a real estate agent, right? Like if you just walk down the street and you ask the average Joe out there or the average Jane out there, you know, can you give me the name and phone number of a real estate agent? Very few of them would be able to do that, right? And even fewer, and I'd say just a handful of them could give you more than one agent's name and contact information, right? Very, very few of them. Now, mm -hmm. your job, my job is to position ourselves in the mind of our prospects to where we own and dominate at least 51% of that tiny little space they have in their brain for the name of a realtor. So the ultimate goal is to get them to think you when they think real estate sales, right? So if they hear of a friend, a family member who's thinking about buying, selling, or investing, your name pops into their head that faster. If they're thinking about doing something, they wouldn't even think or dream of calling anybody other than you. So I'd encourage you to, to build your 36 touch campaign. What does that need to look like? Now, and let's go a little bit deeper on this. So to me, it would be 12 direct, meaning you're going to do a direct mail piece to them once per month. Now for us at the Kokoska Group or TKG, it was... We sent out a direct mail piece to them the first Thursday of every month. And ultimately, we outlined the needs of our buyers that we represented at that time. And we'd have five, six, seven buyers' needs listed on this, this one page direct mail piece. It was really simple. It just said, um, Do you know of anybody thinking of selling a house that meets the needs of any of my buyers? I'm currently representing the following buyers. So it was buyer one looking for this, this price range and this location needs three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two car garage. Really simple, buyer number two, looking in this location, you know, up to 900,000, they need four bedrooms, four bathrooms and a four car garage, right? And then at the bottom, it just said, if you know of anybody who would like to sell a house that meets the needs of my buyers, please call me. And the phone number is the largest thing on the page, right? So it's really simple for them to look at. So direct mail, I think is, is point number one. And do that once per month, and set a target date per month. For us, it's the first Thursday of every month and it went out like clockwork. Now through consistency, your phone's gonna ring with people saying, hey, buyer number four on your list, you know, it looks like they might be a good fit for my house. I'm thinking about selling. It creates listing opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, a monthly e-newsletter would be another great touch. By the way, as a, a vendor that I would highly recommend for that, it would be followupresults.com. That's followupresults.com, where they go out and source all the articles for you, and they build out your e-newsletter for you, and it's, it's very inexpensive. I think it's like, I can't remember, but maybe $150, $160 per month. They'll take your email list, and they'll blast it out to everybody once per month. They send it out through MailChimp, so you have full optics on the back end of that, who clicked on what, who looked at what. And it helps you kind of refine and segment your list. Uh, like you take a list of 5,000 people, send out the email through MailChimp, and you'll see that these 125 people clicked on the article, um, how to get the most out of your house when selling. See, nobody's going to click on that unless they're thinking about selling, right? Or these 280 people clicked on, you know, seven tips to simplify the home buying process. Or these, you know, 200 people clicked on how to get the best interest rate on your mortgage. See, they're not going to click on that unless they're thinking of either refinancing or buying a property, right? So it allows you to take a large list, segment it down to give you your call list so that you can increase your efficiency when doing your prospecting, lead follow-up, and your touch campaign. Now, four of those touches should be, at least four, by the way, should be direct phone calls. Now, the simple strategy there is, somebody from our panelists tell us, what is the simple strategy to make sure that you call every one of those people once per quarter. Just break it down alphabetically. Break it down alphabetically. Keep going, David. What do you mean? Well, so if you're going to call everybody once a quarter, um, so I mean, you basically would just take like one day you're going to do, or, or one week you're going to do A and B, the next week you're going to do B and, or, or C and D, you know, the next week E and F, so on and so on. Yeah. So if their last name begins with A or B, I'm going to call them this week. Love it. So you said there's 26 letters in the alphabet, 52 weeks in the year. Do the math, guys. You'll reach out to everybody in your database four times per year. Now, a lot of people say, well, what do I say? What do I say when I call them? I don't want to bother them, right? And in those cases, they're just being judgmental. 
Meaning, shouldn't it be up to them if you're bothering them or not? Some people say, well, I don't want to call them. It takes too long. They just want to talk. Well, they want to talk because they like you. And what you're doing is you're positioning yourself as the realtor of choice in those conversations, no doubt. So what do you say when you reach out to say a past client or somebody in your sphere of influence? Who wants to volunteer? Just want to call to see how you're doing, see how things are going. And uh, is everybody well in your family with a pandemic? I mean, that's an easy thing to just call up people and say, you know, just checking on you to see if everything's well and, and see how things are going, how you like in your house, you know, just, just kind of go along and see what they're saying, but just saying how you're doing. Just yeah. call and check it. We create such a relationship with our clients as we're going through the process of buying. Sometimes they get the separation anxiety when you don't because you still have to go on and do business. So they love to hear from you, um, especially if they've had a good experience during the, their transaction. I use the Ford acronym, uh, Family Occupation Recreation Dreams. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I do try to limit the time. I can't have you know, 45 minute conversations with everybody, everybody in my sphere. So I'm, my target is like maybe, you know, 12 minutes. And so half of, half of the uh, conversation is, is Ford. And then the other half is, is transitioning into business. Fantastic. And how do you transition into business without being that, that pushy kind of a give me, give me, give me kind of a salesperson? I think a lot of times um, they ask us, how's the market? you know, knowing that we're uh, experienced at that. And, you know, it's basically, it depends who you are, if you're a buyer or a seller. And then, um, you know, also just transitioning the end of the call. Hey, who do you know? Do you know anybody that's um, buying or selling their home? And um, would you promise to think of me if you run into anybody? So, so hey, by the way, one of the strategies I picked up from Colette McDonald is when she's engaged in these conversations, she just simply says, can you believe what home values are doing in your neighborhood? Yeah. That's great. That's a, Love that. That's a great transition. Way into a real estate conversation, right? Can you believe yeah. what real estate values are doing in your neighborhood? And by the way, oh. somebody says, how's the market? And we as realtors, we get that, that question more often than any other question, right? So your response really determines the outcome of that relationship or that, that conversation, excuse me. And here's what I would encourage you to say. When they say, how's the market? Rather than giving your opinion, like, oh, it's slow on the upper end or it's softening in the upper end or man, the inventory's tight. Don't give an opinion. Simply answer the question with another question. Now that's a, a very powerful sales strategy as well. Like my wife said, why is it that you answer every question that I ask you with another question? I said, well, why is it important that you know the answer to that? <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, they say, how's the market? You say this, well, you know, that really depends. Are you asking because you're looking to buy a home, sell a house or invest in real estate? Which is it? See, because your answer is going to be different if they want to invest in today's market. Your answer is going to be different if they want to buy in today's market. And of course, your answer should be different if they're thinking of selling in today's market, right? Don't just give them some off the cuff response that leads you nowhere. Turn their question back into a question. That's All right. Great. So. But and and adding on that, if you just answer the question like, well, you know, here's all the data for it, then they're just going to go with that data to the real estate agent that occupies their top of mind to go do business with them. No doubt. So you're helping your competition. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Do all right. So and I also wanted to add one more thing too. When when you're having those sphere calls, um, the thing that we use we use humor a lot. You know, so when we make the call, you know, because if you can laugh with people, you know, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, this guy's all right. Um, and so the question that I always ask, you know, like, hey, I know that you just had another kid. I was watching that on Facebook. Congratulations. So you're probably ready to buy a new house then, right? You yeah. ever own that one? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and everybody that has done business with us before knows that I'm kind of joking around and they're like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, but seriously, you know what the, what the market's done. You know what the values are. Have you thought about that? Do you know how much your house is worth? And then we just bring it into a conversation and usually I'm over there eh, within the next month, you know, doing numbers on their house. So anyway. I love that. Good one, David. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's three powerful questions I would encourage you to ask during some of these conversations, right? Meaning question number one, if you were to move, where would you go next? They said, well, we'd probably move to Montana. Say. Okay, well, it's Helena, Montana, which is where David's located, right? 
I think said, the next question is, why is that important to you? Well, because we heard about this day, guy, David Torgerson. We want to look <laughs> that, right? So with that, why is that important to you? You get to the emotional triggers. What's the emotional reason why they would consider a move? And then question number three is really simple. In a perfect world, when would that be? You're not being a, a slimy salesperson when you ask those questions. It's really quite easy. They say, well, I have no immediate need. Or by the way, if, if you say, if you say, if you were to move, where would you go next? And they say, I'm not moving. I'm going to stay here till I die. Don't ask question number three. When will that be? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you get the point. Now, if you're struggling with reasons to call your sphere of influence and the people in your database, I would encourage you to plan a quarterly customer appreciation event. It could be something as simple. I mean, we're, we're coming up on Halloween, for example. Maybe mm -hmm. you want to give away a pumpkin to everybody in your database. It gives you a powerful reason to reach out and call them. Say I was able to negotiate a great deal through this pumpkin patch, and we'd like to deliver a pumpkin to your house. This is our way of saying thank you for the opportunity to earn your business in the future. Really simple. Great reason to call. By the way, with that strategy, one of the things I would encourage you to do to get a little more life out of this, to do a pumpkin growing contest that you announce in May. Oh, I love that. And everybody pumpkin seeds, okay? And you're going to have a pumpkin growing contest. You set up a private Facebook group for this pumpkin growing contest. And they're, they're instructed to post their pictures. How's their pumpkin growing and all of that, right? You invite them all to be members. See, every time they look at that pumpkin, every time they, they care for, you know, the, the growth of that pumpkin, whether they're watering it or putting fertilizer on it or whatever the case is, guess what? They're thinking about you. And that's going to go from May clear up until the end of October. So it, you get a lot of life out of something like that. And the seeds cost you just 10, 25 cents per packet. Really? That's genius because anybody can grow pumpkin. That's right. <laughs> Well, if not, not only that, but if you tell them, get on this Facebook group and you kind of make it live and this, let's see what your pumpkins or seeds are doing from May to on, on, you're on there. And then, you know, you could go into the real estate thing there. You're going to get, you're going to be out on top of a lot of people's minds. No doubt. Mm -hmm. And you yeah, get a prize yeah. to the winner. I mean, it's, it's a kind of a fun little strategy. Yet by doing a quarterly event, something like that, it gives you a powerful reason to reach out to them on a quarterly basis. Okay. And you're not yeah. being that pushy salesperson, always asking for referrals. So it's good stuff. Okay. In, so this, in the same vein, sorry, I keep jumping in, but it's yeah. just really important. Um, so mm -hmm. in the, in the same vein of like, you know, what is the reason to reach out to your sphere? Any of the agents that we're bringing on our team, like we, we let them know, like that's the time when you re-engage your sphere is like when you change a real estate brokerage, you know, or whether you join a team or whether you're brand new into the business. Like if, if I could ever go back into any point in time in my career, that would be the time that I would go back and like redo that mm -hmm. you know, to re-engage with the sphere because I never did that. You know, I was like, oh, I just changed brokerages, you know, like, eh, whatever, you know, yeah. business as usual. You know, but I, I really should have leveraged that. Like, hey, I'm really excited. I just joined a new brokerage or I joined a team or I joined a whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it's a natural reason to reach out to anybody. Mm -hmm. FYI. I, I wanted to make one other comment on the three questions, Sean, that you had said, like, if you were to move, where, where would you go? And why is that important to you? And in a perfect world, when would that be? Not only is that good for actually right then, it, it actually lets people know that you're more interested in them than you just trying to sell them. So you've got those three questions, but it also gives you their hot points. So when you follow up with them later, if it's somebody that uh, my kids are going to be moving to Tennessee, which they, she has four of my grandkids. So, you know, I'm probably moving to Tennessee soon, right? So that's, that's the goal that's going to probably happen. But for me, that would be like, you know, grandkids are very, very important. So when you're calling them on the next time, so how did the move go? How do you feel? You know, just gives you that reason to kind of follow up um, and gives you those hot points to push those buttons when you need to, when the time is ready for them to sell. Way to go. Love that, Sandy. Thank you. All right. So Sean, I know you've engaged in a platform called Listings to Leads. I'm going to stop my share and Sean, I want you to walk them through that platform. This could be an action on your ETA gang. Okay. So Sean, take it away. Uh, it says I can't share there. Oh, let me give you permission. Sorry about that, bud. It's okay. So I, I had been part of, you know, Boomtown and Commissions Inc. for a period of time. And 
you know, there's very expensive platforms out there. And, I, you know, it, I've also tried to go in and run Facebook ads myself. I think finding sellers is one of the most challenging things on the internet. And really it's their top of funnel, meaning, you know, you're going to, you're going to start out by gathering people that are thinking about selling or curious, get into relationship with them, not, you know, looking for the ones that are ready to sell right now, which might be the needle in the haystack, but you're, you won't know unless you start gathering and getting in relationship with those people. So Facebook ads are a great way to do that at a very low cost. And uh, this platform um, that I'm going to share with you real quick, I found is probably one of the most inexpensive platforms and the easiest to use. And it's called listings to leads. And if you want to email me at Sean, S E A N at iconcoaching.com, uh, I can share with you how to get a discount. If you want to add, uh, you know, get, get on this platform. Um, and my cost is about, I think it's about $40 a month to have the platform to have access to the platform. And when you access it, you get all sorts of tools. You can see on the left here, there's landing pages, there's library of pre-created content. Um, there's a chat bot, there's um, uh, the analytics that go along with it. There's, you can, you know, use, get permission from somebody to use their listing to run ads around a listing uh, if you don't have any listings yourself. And that would be obviously buyers. But I wanted to share with you the seller one of the seller tools that I use is two, there's two different seller tools. You can do a home value. You can see this one I just created today, a free home value, which gives using a, a home value landing page. And then you can see here, some of these ones that I've created here, um, questions to ask before you sell your home, you know, and there's a PDF download that's associated with this. And literally it's like three to five clicks and the ad is up and running. You can see on this particular ad, I generated nine, nine leads at $11.11 uh, .11 uh, cost per click, and it reached 1,425 people. This platform even has a retargeting camp uh, tool, so I can retarget the 1,400 people that didn't click on the ad necessarily and continue to build leads that way. You can see this one down here, generated 18 leads at a cost of $5.88. And uh, just because I knew I was wanted to be prepared for the seven, uh, for this webinar, I generated over 103 seller leads at, a, at an average cost of $10.88 uh, cost per lead and um, was able to close three transactions for a gross commission of 33,211 and an ROI of 1,328%, Sean. That's huge. And the, the ads look amazing. You can brand your colors and it's really simple. Uh, you spend the money on the advertising, which I spent um, $1,125 on the advertising. And I spent uh, $1,200 on photography for those listings. When I combine that cost, that's where I, that's where I get the 1,328% return on investment. Okay, so you're even throwing additional expenses in there. Uh, other than just the lead generation and lead conversion expense, I love if it. If I were to, if I were to just take the lead generation, Sean, my ROI is twenty eight hundred percent. Well, that doesn't and, suck. <laughs> so for every one dollar you're spending, you're making twenty eight hundred dollars. How many of you guys would do that? I think that's that called. What's that called? Winning. <laughs> <laughs> that is winning. It, it's no really, doubt about it. It's, really cool the ad this is an example of the ad they click learn more and when they click learn more they get a lead capture page and they hit submit you get their name phone number and email address and not all the numbers are good you know but most i find most of the email addresses are good so i'm building my email database so I, that 36 touch you talked about i can move them right into a 12 direct so i'm they're seeing my e-newsletter every month and the ratio on that is 50 to one. If I, if I continue marketing to those people after about a two to three year saturation, I should get one transaction for every 50 people that I've built in my not, uh, haven't met database. And oh, they get, that they is get winning. a download. What was that? That is winning. So again, yeah. this may be an activity or an action on your ETA to engage with listings to leads. 
reach out to Sean directly, S-E-A-N at iconcoaching.com if you want additional information on that platform and discounts. Uh, Sean, I, I look forward to adding value to all of our listeners today. Whether you're live on Facebook or live on the webinar, I'm glad you're here. So we're going to go back to the ETA and you kind of get the point here. And for the sake of time, we're not going to go through all potential five actions yet. Um, you guys having fun? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. We're going to go back to sharing the ETA format. Again, expectations, targets, and actions. Expectation is close 50 transactions. Target number one, I want to close 30 listings. We outline the actions between target number one. Ask the by who question because that's the leverage question. And I want you to think as you're building your ETA out, I want you to think in terms of three words. That's who, not you. Who can do that for you? Let's go to target number two. We're going to close 20 buyers. That's target number two. Who's going to do that? Maybe you have a talented buyer agent on your team. You're going to assign that target to them by when it would be by the end of 2022, right? Or the end of the, the following year. Action one. What's an action that you guys have found to be successful in generating buyer leads, closing buyer leads? Talk to me. Well, I was just kidding about um, just loving, <laughs> just doing listings. I do love buyers that I have a heart for first time buyers. I actually started as a buyer's agent. So um, one of the biggest things I do, I love leveraging our lenders. Um, we do uh, once a month, uh, how to buy your first home seminar with a lender at their office. Um, and we kind of market together and see, um, we also put in there, see if you qualify for no money down mortgage. So, um, and then we get these people in here. Lenders love to do that. We both get deals. It's a win-win for everyone. So it's a, it's a neat thing to put into your, your plan. Yeah, it's pretty legit. I love it. Okay. So first time home buyer seminar, that might be an action and, and by who, well, it's going to be you, your lender, maybe your title company wants to participate, maybe your home inspector, and you're going to ask them to send out your ghostwritten email campaign, your ghostwritten you know, uh, social media touch campaign, you'll build out the registration pages and you'll invite all kinds of people to engage in this first time, buy, uh, first time home buyer seminar. Now, I think the reason I stuttered is, and Maggie, I know you get a heart for first time buyers. At the same time, I, I, would, I would much rather see you and do a home buying seminar, not just first time home buyers. Because if you do first-time home buyers, you're now eliminating anybody else who has already acquired a property and they want to buy a home. Yet, also when we advertise for first-time home buyers, well, we get first-time home buyers. And Maggie, I know you love that aspect of the business. Yet, first-time buyers are generally at the low end of the market, right? And they take the same amount of time, if not more time, to close than somebody who's buying double the median price, right? So I would just say change it from first-time or how to buy your first home to home buying seminars, whether it's your first or 50th home, we're going to show you the shortcuts, something along those lines. Y'all agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I had that. Love that. So you can do it quarterly. You can involve a right. different lender every quarter to get indirect access to their database and have them invite all of the people in their sphere to attend your home buying seminar. You can involve a different home inspector every single quarter and invite their people to attend. So you're constantly getting a fresh group of people showing up to learn how to you know, save money on their next home purchase, how to shortcut the process, how to win in multiple offer situations, whatever it is that you choose as your curriculum, um, they'll help you promote it. I love it. What a great action. What's another action to get buyers, guys? Well, I'll, I'll share the one that we're going to push out. Uh, we haven't used it yet, but we created buyer MLS. Oh, Tell us more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we... Um, I've been working with an app developer and, uh, and of course buyers are in this type of a market are the distant franchise sector of the market. Um, there's no way to actually advertise a buyer. You, I mean, how do, how do you really do that effectively? And not only that, how do you advertise buyers to sellers? So we just developed an app that will give the ability for buyers to sign up and it's, we're going to push it out nationally. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. So um, in theory, it should work really well. But the tried and true, like if you wanted to get more buyers, then, you know, leverage on your listings and do open houses. Okay, so uh, how many open houses would you do, you know, per week or per month? What, what might that look like, David? What would you advise people to do? One, one, one a week, one a week minimum. 
one a week minimum. Fantastic. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's a reactive way of identifying buyers. Yet you can be proactive during open houses. By the way, you get out of things what you put into things. So as many signs as you can get up there, uh, as many ads as you can place on Facebook, you can boost that, you can get more and more traffic, make sure you're tied into Zillow at realtor.com. So everybody knows about your open house. And yet when they come into the open house, many times buyers look at open, open houses they can't afford. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So since that does in fact happen, I would encourage you bring a laptop and a lightweight printer to your open house. That way, when you get curious, when the prospect comes in, say, how does this home compare to some of the others you've seen? How would you rate this home on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being ideal and one being nowhere close to the mark? Where are we at? They say, oh, it's a four. Okay. What would you change about it to make it a 10? Well, number one, I can't qualify for this amount or Maybe I need a bigger kitchen. Maybe I need a bigger backyard. But why don't we step over to my computer? I'd like to do an active, just a live search through MLS and provide you with a customized list of every property that matches your unique criteria. I'll go ahead and print that list. And you can, you can leave this open house with that printed list. So you just say how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what price range you're comfortable with, what style of home, newer home, older home, school district, lot size, you know the questions. And let's say there are eight properties that match their specific criteria. Go ahead and print all eight of them, seriously. And then review them with them and say, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to create an A-list of properties, which means these are the ones you want to see the inside of. And let's say you printed all eight and they want to see the inside of three. Okay, how easy is it now to set a showing at your open house? Because you've positioned yourself to possess something they want. Since you've met their needs and demonstrated your value, it's a relatively simple segue right into setting the appointment. Meaning I finished the op uh, open house today at 3.30. Would you like to get together at four or is tomorrow morning better for you? Really simple segue into the close. No doubt about that. So great I think, job. What I, are think this, I think the simpler way to do that is to bring a buyer's agent in and just give all the buyers to them. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> Who not you, right, David? Who not right. you? No doubt about that. And a lot of people say, well, I'm not ready to hire a buyer's agent or a showing partner. Yes, you are. You say, yes, well, you I'm are. Not, I don't generate enough leads to keep them busy. No, they can generate their own leads, right? I mean, if they did two open houses a week, they would have more leads in 60 days than they know what to do with, right? Mm -hmm. So there's I think an, everybody's ready for that. There's an agent in our MLS that did one of the most genius things that I've ever seen before. And I kind of feel bad. I never thought about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they just they'll call other agents, even from other brokerages, because they're with an independent brokerage. And they'll just tell them like, hey, I'm going to have an open house. I'll be there to host it with you, but you can take all the buyers and we'll just split them 50-50. Makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. So other actions, you might join uh, a business networking group, like a BNI or an MNI or something like that, and focus on getting referrals there. You know, certainly the 36 touch campaign applies to target number two as well. Um, let's get into target number three, just for the sake of time. Now, target number three, it's all about leverage. Now, there's four key categories of leverage. It's models, systems, technology, and people. So what I'd encourage you to do is identify, well, where am I lacking in models? So I'm talking about your economic model, your budgeting model, lead generation and lead conversion models, um, compensation models, if you choose to leverage through people, right? Um, systems, where are you lacking systems? Now, prior to our webinar, we had a little pre-call. We talked about, well, what systems am I lacking? And here's how you know, okay? To identify first your key frustrations. See, because of frustration in your business, well, it's not you, it's not your clients, your prospects, your vendors, your team. It's simply the lack of a system. Now, a system to me is a standardized process that produces a consistent and predictable result. So an example of an action would be to systemize your buyer presentation. Meaning you do it the same way every single time, modified only for the dominant behavior characteristics of your prospect, and yet you get that consistent, predictable result. And once it's systemized, then it can be effectively leveraged through others. I want you to view your business like a McDonald's franchise. And when you step up to the counter, you know, you're, you're standing right in front of the person behind the cash register. Where are the French fries located? To the All back and the left, there. right? Right by the drive through Is that right? Right. Yep. And by the way, it's the same in every McDonald's gang. I've been in McDonald's in South America, Mexico, in um, Australia, in Indonesia, in the, obviously the U.S. And, and Canada. Frankly, I've eaten more McDonald's than I care to admit, yet they're always... <laughs> <laughs> 
they're always the same, right? Yes. I mean, could you imagine if it wasn't the same, if it wasn't a system and, you know, you've got this McDonald's in Los Angeles where Sean is located and they have the best French fries out of all of the thousands, uh, tens of thousands of McDonald's in the world. Or you had one in Idaho that had the, the best Big Mac. I mean, you would have inconsistent and varying results. Therefore, it would damage the brand considerably. And while many of you are great salespeople, you're great at your listing presentation, your buyer presentation, when you try to leverage through others, they're not you. And you're going to get inconsistent and varied results. You have to apply a Six Sigma kind of approach to this to say, everybody on the team is going to do it the exact same way. And we're going to get a consistent, predictable result. Then you can tweak and modify and plus the process you go along to bring it out to get the most out of that process you can. So what systems are lacking? from your current strategy. Then of course, leverage through technology. So how are, we already talked a little bit about how Sean Policino is leveraging through technology to generate listing leads, yet there's platforms out there like Sync. David, I know you're on Sync. Sandy, you're on Sync. Mm -hmm. and you're generating hundreds of leads every single month and leveraging that lead generation aspect of the business. Then it's really all about lead conversion. Now, Sandy and David, You've also leveraged some of that lead conversion aspect through virtual assistants, ISAs that are making those calls for you. So let's talk about leveraging through people for a moment. Sandy, let's start with you. I know you've got a couple of showing partners. Mm -hmm. Talk about that for a moment. So I have a couple of newer agents that are showing partners and I pay them a percent. We have an agreement where I could just pay them a percentage where they, uh, if they show the, uh, the buyer the home, uh, then they become a showing partner. So then they, I train them through the whole process of uh, they get to learn everything, how to go on contract and write all that. So it's a learning curve for them as well. But also now they have to go to all of the inspections. They're going to all of that, which frees my time up to do get more leads and to do more business. So they, so they're learning. It's it's a win win for them, especially newer newer agents. They get they get some money, but they also get. Um, mentoring by somebody that is is successful so that is i think that is the main key for that part um and it's not um and you're still getting credit like for us in exp um, i'm capped so my goal is to get my cap back and in uh my um in revenue share in stocks uh, so, so that's my goal that, you know, you, I want to make sure that I'm accounted for on those and not just giving those away, uh, because we do get our $16,000 back in stock. And so, uh, that that's one of the reasons why I joined EXP and, um, and then leverage them so they can do the same thing, right? It's not just to build me up, but it's to build them up so they can start getting their quota and getting their own, uh, retirement set up for them. No doubt. And earning that cap back in the form of stock, what other brokerage does that? So that's yeah. powerful. And you yeah. can also have ISAs. Remember, it's who, not you. They can mm -hmm. do circle prospecting for you. They can call for sale by owners, expired listings, canceled listings. Um, they'll help you generate more listing leads. Simply put, if you want more appointments, and I know you do, you just need to create more conversations. Now, here's the good news. Those conversations can be leveraged through others. Remember, it's who, not you. Now, here's kind of the bad news is you get to master it first because you're going to have to train these people on exactly how to do what they need to do. You'll provide them with scripts, dialogues, objection handlers, and help them kind of perfect that, that process. And those, those scripts, by the way, a script is nothing more than a system. Mm -hmm. It produces a consistent and predictable result. Yes. All right, King, we've got just a minute left. Um, I've got an accelerated breakthrough class that I teach starting in just a minute. So if you want more information, Seriously, number one, go to Icon Producers on Facebook. It's a private group. Make application to join our group. You're going to be able to see videos, replays just like this. You're going to be able to ask questions, send and receive referrals, get answers. Gang, go there and register now. If you're interested in learning a little bit about stock awards and revenue share through eXp, simply email grace at iconcoaching.com and she'll set you up with one of our Icon Producers like the panelists on this this webinar with us today, and they'll be able to explain that model frontward and backward for you so you can make an educated and informed decision. Is it right for you? If so, then we'll, we'll assist you through that, that transition, okay? So I wanna thank you all for being here, for your time, your attention, your energy. I especially wanna thank our panelists for just pouring into our audience. And gang, thank you for your time. 
Any uh, final thoughts, words of wisdom, gang? I just have to no. say one thing that with since I've been in this icon producers, the collaboration is wonderful. So if you're not joining, please join us. You you will find yourself just rising, rising to more successful and just it, it's just a great group of people. And Sean, I appreciate everything you do for us. Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. And by the way, it doesn't matter what brokerage you're associated with. Stay Absolutely. with your current brokerage as long as you need to. Stay there the rest of your career. You can still join Icon Producers and let us just pour into you and add value. As I do have to jump to start my next one. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.